He's a two-time captain uh, at South Carolina. Well, not anymore because he's about to be in the NFL. Spencer Rattler, how are you feeling? I'm great. Thank it's great Rattler, to be here. NFL quarterback. How does it make you feel? Sounds good. It's yeah. a blessing. Blessing just to get here. Are you like a manifesting kind of guy? Are you a visualizer? How do you sort of handle all the pressures and being torn apart? I guess you could say I manifest a lot. You know, kind of just see myself in that position ever since a little kid. And uh, it's awesome to be at this point right now, three weeks till the draft. But as you know, the work's just starting. Do you know what you're wearing? Do you know if you're going? Tell me everything I need to know. So I'm going to stay back home with the family, you know, tight group of friends. Um, probably just do it at home. Um, I'll have something nice to wear. Can I ask you why? Why, why, you know, I'm thinking like if it was me, the hoopla, it's in Detroit, Detroit's going to be crazy, mm -hmm. Roger Goodell, the whole thing, like do you, you just want to stay home, figure, figure it out? I think it's just easier to yeah. stay at home, you know, be around the fam, be around the fam, everybody you love, and uh, keep, keep it a little more simple. I love it. What are you most looking forward to? It being over already? This journey's pretty long. It's a long process, but I mean, I've just been trying to take advantage of every opportunity. Um, just looking forward to hearing my name get called. Um, I want to start with the final four here. Let's mm -hmm. really get into okay. this here. South Carolina women's basketball team. Okay, everyone seems to be talking about Caitlin Clark and the resurgence of UConn. Tell people why they need to stop sleeping on your Gamecocks. I hope nobody's sleeping on them because I, I think they're still undefeated. I mean, Don Staley's the GOAT, greatest coach in women's basketball by far. Um, love Don, love the love the women's Gamecocks. Um, I see them winning it all. So you think they're gonna beat NC State? Book that. Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah. Do you wish you could go to that game? I feel like you should go. <sighs> is that is the Final Four for women's out in Arizona as well? Uh, in Cleveland. In Cleveland. Okay. So yeah, I probably Can't won't make that there. one. I mean, agency got to send the jet, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they got a private jet here. Um, you have a Gamecocks tattoo. You're wearing a long sleeve, mm -hmm. which I'm not gonna let you do. I think we have a picture of this thing, right? Um, a video. What does this say about <laughs> South Carolina that you, you know, did this? Let me see this thing. Tell me about it. Uh, yeah, so, you know, I was there for two years. It's like a home for me. Um, it's my home away from home. Love it. Uh, graduated from there, so it's stamped on me for life. What does this say about South Carolina? Because you transferred there from Oklahoma. So mm -hmm. why is there, you know, why, why that, why that, not that? No, I had love for Oklahoma for sure, but just that feeling at South Carolina, that, that Southern hospitality is real. You know, teammates, fan base, everybody. It was amazing. We're going to go deep into this past of you, Spencer Rattler, here. Okay. You were great on the court as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's, let's show some video. You won the Arizona uh -oh. State Championship at Pinnacle High School, averaging 13 points a game your junior year. Um, do you think you could have done some damage in the NBA if you stuck with it? If I was 6'5 and up... <laughs> Most deaf, but uh, yeah, I mean, I had a couple of 30, 35 point games, you know, in, in high school, we won a state championship my junior year. Um, we had a great team, so definitely miss those days. How do you feel about the talk about you in this draft? Like when you hear whether it's something um, constructive feedback or something good or bad, like we just had you back there with a color analyst who said you look 45 and one thing, 25. I'm like, if somebody said that to me, I would cry. <laughs> How do you handle some of the, the things that are being flung your way? You know, I think it just comes with the territory, especially being a quarterback going through this process. Um, it's nothing new. You know, you go through it through college. Uh, it's a whole nother level right now. But, I mean, you control what you can, and uh, everything else will take care of itself. Uh, take advantage of every opportunity. Check the boxes off. Go complete your goals, and the rest, the rest will handle itself. Here's what I want to know. Through this process, you're being thrown a lot of tough tasks, and, and you know, teams are preparing to give you a lot of difficult things or a lot of tough questions. What's been the toughest sort of situation from a team for you to have to, to deal with? Which, which team did you ha have to prepare for the most? Um, like you said earlier, uh, it's probably Denver, you know, with, with their QB quiz and what they did for the install. Um, it was a pretty pretty cool thing, but definitely had to study, study up on that, uh, but did a great job with that. What does a quiz entail? Like questions about like your favorite color or like w questions about like really detailed stuff? Just offensive stuff, just quarterback stuff, really breaking down their offense, formation, stuff like that. He's a maniac, that Sean Payton. A maniac. He knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, uh, there was an, uh, another, uh, there was a, a coach that I talked to that compared you to Matthew Stafford. And his arm, can, he said he can, he can spin it just like that. How do you feel about that comparison? It's a great compliment. I grew up watching Matthew Stafford, no Sean Marino at Georgia. Um, so definitely a fan of Stafford for sure. Love what, he's, love what he does, um, love what he has done. You know, watch his tape throughout my career, try to pick little parts of his game and implement it into my training. And uh, 
you know, he's got a big arm, so that's a, that's a great compliment. He's a Super Bowl champion. That's right. Uh, do you model your game after somebody in the NFL? Is there a quarterback that you sort of patterned yourself after? You know, I've never really patterned my game after anybody. Kind of just watch what guys do and, and try to just do a little bit of that, you know, within training, practice, game, stuff like that. But, I mean, naturally, this is just who I am. You know, I've always been this way. I feel like Drew Brees, no? Did you grow up liking Drew Brees? I mean, he's a technician, very accurate, can put the ball wherever he wants, can process at a super high level, uh, one of the best to ever do it. Have you gotten any good advice, I feel like, going into the draft, how to handle yourself, things that you're going to get thrown? Did any, anybody, like, along, who's the person alongside that you're sort of every day keeping up with? Mm -hmm. uh, is it your agent, former coach, something like that? I would say family, definitely my agent, uh, Chris, and just really just controlling what we can, working as hard as we can every single day leading up to the draft. And then once you get there, I mean, you got to restart over. You're brand new, rookie, um, go in the building, be a leader, be who you are, uh, you know, get to learn your teammates, staff, coaches, everything, and just find your routine that first year. So I'm looking forward to it. Why don't we shout out your team? Because that's the thing people maybe don't know that are watching. Like, you have to decide on people who you're going to trust, ride with through this process. Like, how much do they mean to you right now in this process? And some of them are here bright and early in studio. Mm -hmm. A ton. I mean, just not now, but even throughout college, everything, high school. I mean, having a family, having a team is super important. So I uh, wouldn't be here without them, for sure. Speaking, and it's like building a team, trusting them. Let's talk a little bit about your wide receiver. Mm -hmm. I was just talking about Stephon Diggs and Josh Allen. You, of course, had Zay. Yep. How important was he to you? Because I'm looking at these draft mock drafts, and I'm like, y'all are going like, y'all, like, it could be you or him at some point. How would you t handle that? Xavier's a great, great player. I mean, um, obviously didn't have the production he wanted his first four years, but worked his tail off, caught his confidence. I would say that 2022 uh, Gator Bowl game, he had two touchdowns, and that offseason he really attacked, worked. We created a great chemistry, and, you know, he, he had a historic year here at South Carolina. What makes him special? Just his, he's driven. I mean, he's driven, he's confident, um, obviously super talented, 6'3", 225, can jump like 45 inches. It's freaky, so... He's a great player. It's freaky. He's a great player. Okay, two other teams that like you, and I think a lot, most teams have interest in you. It's sort of weird at the quarterback spot, Vikings and Falcons. Okay, Kevin O'Connell and Raheem Morris, which is all, both amazing. They both have interest. They both come from um, situations that are, you know, in-depth, complicated. We had, you know, Kyle Rudolph come on and say, you know, to, to handle Kevin O'Connell's volume is really, really hard. The Shanahan vibes and the McVay vibes. Um, why are they right in circling you as a guy who could take that on? Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm a guy that is prepared for whatever situation I'm going into. You know, I've been in three different offenses, played in two of the biggest leagues in, in college. You know, SEC, I believe, being the top. Um, you know, an elite processor, can put the ball wherever I want on the field, and, you know, great leader as well. Um, so... I feel like those qualities as a quarterback, you know, you want that, and, and I, I feel like I have that. We had a, a, a quarterback guru, a guy who was in the, in the room with Aaron Rodgers, learned from Kurt Benkert, um, and he was with, in the Niners locker room. He knows all those guys. He was really high on you, and he said that your skill set, uh, and he's right about it, pretty much everything is kind of wild, that um, he actually says that your skill set fits better in the NFL even than it did in college, which is like, phew, mind-blowing. But he has a question for you. I don't know. Does, do, you have, do you have an earpiece? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Um, so let's, let's take a listen to Kurt's question for you. You love Spencer Rattler, which I love. Yes. He's yes. going to be on my show. What should I ask Spencer Rattler? Ooh. Okay. Ask him. Ask him about his college scheme and the seven-man pro and three-man routes. Just ask him about that. Now I have no idea. Tell, answer the man's question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Seven-man pro. Um, we had a lot of injuries up front this year. Um, a lot of young guys playing, new in the position. Um, so it was really unfortunate with everything we were going through. Um, so you know we. Struggled at times up front, but, you know, they fought for us every single time. So seven-man pro, just trying to keep that pocket nice and clean, having extra guys in protection with a tight end and a back. Um, and then three-man concepts. I mean, we were pretty successful with our three-man concepts with, like, a post spear, uh, backside dagger, check down to the back. So being able to really go through that, um, we had a lot of success with it. Hit Xavier on a lot of spear routes, post routes for touchdowns. So There we uh, go. Give him a little love. I love yeah. that. Good question, Kurt. Yeah, good question, Kurt. Hopefully it's sufficed and we answer that for you. Um, how would you describe yourself? Like your personality, I could tell you like right now, you're very self-assured, you're smooth, you're kind, there's a humbleness to you, but it's not like, oh, it's not overshadowed by, you're very sure of yourself mm -hmm. and you you really seem very mature to me. How would you describe yourself at this point in time? Well, I appreciate the kind mm -hmm. words, but yeah, I feel like I'm a guy that's definitely um, confident. You know, I'll never let my confidence waver, um, you know, believe in, in what I'm capable of, uh, have a lot of faith, um, driven, motivated, leader, um, 
just the things you said. I really feel like like that's me. And uh, as a quarterback, those are the qualities and attributes you want to have. Yeah, that QB1 thing, Netflix, people have their thoughts. What would you have done differently? You know, I was a kid at the time. Um, that's how we competed. Uh, I'm a super competitor, so, you know, we get into it. I'm still close with those guys to this day. You know, I had a great time. have a lot of kids and, and fans that come up to me and, and say, you know, they're big fans of me from that show. So uh, it was definitely a blessing to, to be able to, you know, get others' attention and, and be, be that motivating factor for them to play the game, inspire them, the youth. Um, so, you know, there's a the good and bad, but, you know, I wouldn't change a thing. How have you evolved just as a player, as a person, since just even that time? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think just a natural growth. I mean, I was 17 years old at the time. Um, but, yeah, natural growth, going through success, going through adversity, uh, you'll go through some things. Yeah. You became friendly with Baker Mayfield. And, of course, we just talked about Jalen Hurts from your time there at Oklahoma. Like yourself, these guys have overcome, like you have, obstacles, mm -hmm. adversity. I know for a fact GMs and coaches like, they're attracted to players mm -hmm. like that, that show that they've got some toughness, they've been over something. Um, have you gotten any um, advice from either of them? Do you learn from example, osmosis with Jalen Hurts? How does that go? Mm -hmm. You know, I wasn't around Baker when he played there, but obviously – you know, had, had a couple times I was around him at Oklahoma and obviously sat behind Jalen for a whole year. So I think just watching how he prepared, how he led, how he moved um, was very important for me at a young age. And I think just seeing how he prepared into where he's at now, I mean, that's a testament to him. So be more specific. What did you really pick up from Jalen in that year? Yeah, so he kind of went through a similar situation with me, you know, transferred from a school, was, was successful at that other school, uh, you know, landed at another school and had success. So. Really, I just watched how, how, what he did, day in and day out, how he practiced. Like, like you said, he's very you know, motivated, very driven, um, serious, and I think at times, you, you know, everybody's different. You know, I'm not just like him, but if you can take little things you learn from these guys, you can be successful. Do you hear the player comparisons to Baker Mayfield? Um, I've heard it a few times. You, you, don't, know. you don't love them? I like Bake. Bake. Bake is a hell of a player. i um, always been a fan of him, and he's doing it. He, just got paid, so I'm happy for him. Uh, yeah. He's a great player. Always looked up to him. It always depends on where you go, too, right? So mm -hmm. the situation, and then you can rewrite your story, and that's another quarterback that's been through um, a lot of adversity. Um, I'm, I'm good friends with Yogi Roth, who, of course, um, Elite 11 is mm -hmm. a big thing, and you were part of that with Jaden Daniels and Bo Nix, I believe, um, and won the MVP. In the Senior Bowl, you beat out Joe Milton, Michael Penix, and Michael Pratt for that MVP. I'd like to know... Do you think you are being talked about where you should? You know, I kind of leave that up for everybody to break down. You know, I, I feel like I'm one of the best quarterbacks in this class. Um, you know, I truly believe that, and my work's got to speak for itself. You know, I hope somebody sees that, and, um, you know, I'm just controlling what I can. But I leave the opinions and everything up to everybody else. What do you think of Caleb Williams? He's a great player. What about his game do you like? Can create. You know, make make the throws, can run, very athletic. He's a good mm -hmm. player. Spencer, what aren't we talking about with you? Because I think we see everything that we see on tape. Mm -hmm. But is there anything that we that you're like, why don't they talk about this? <sighs> I don't know. You got anything on your mind? I, <laughs> I can't think. You're 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 being you're playing a little too humble. I feel like you should be like, I'm t I want to I should go number one overall. Like, let's go. Everybody would love to go number one overall, but yeah. you know, you got to control what you can. Um, I would love to be drafted as high as I can, but at the end of the day, it's a blessing to get picked wherever. Where does that come from with you that you can block out all the noise? Like people, so there's, there's different lanes of people that are like searching their name on Twitter, looking at their stuff. How do you, I can tell you operate like right here. Mm -hmm. You have not looked away once during this interview. Where does that come from? I think just being, you know, in the media's eye, being a young guy, highly recruited since 17, 18, I think that kind of gets you ready for, for this right now. You know, going through success at one school, going through adversity, already seeing things, going through things, and then coming back on the other side successful. I think going through those, um, you know, those situations, those those things, you, you learn a lot and yeah. uh, you see things differently and process differently. Yeah, we're gonna take a short break here. We're gonna play a little game in the break and I think Deshaun Jackson is here somewhere. Let's get to, get to him. Um, we're gonna talk a little uh, NIL action, by the way. Okay. Um, okay, we'll be back right after this, guys, with Spencer Rattler. We are back with South Carolina quarterback and future NFL star Spencer Rattler. I'm like, what do you want to talk about? You're the boss. You're the quarterback. I'm just like a, you know, I'm just on, on set in the practice squad over here. You're a big time player too. <laughs> I appreciate <laughs> that. Okay, let's talk a little bit about how you prepare. It's so important. I know NFL coaches, they're, they're ripping everybody apart and, and putting you under a microscope all the time. As far as you approaching the game, the draft, your life, decisions, mm -hmm. how does Spencer Rattler prepare? 
So each week, you know, it's the same same routine every week throughout the season. Um, Sunday, we we get in the building after the game. Um, we're attacking our cleanups. I'm um, watching tape before I even get with my coaches, just so I have the answers before they even ask. You know, just so I'm prepared. Uh, Monday's our off day. Get in the facility, take care of the body, um, go through our you know, stretch, routine, whatever we have. Uh, I get a 90 minute massage every Monday. It's mandatory throughout the season. So I think that kind of kept my body into the game. Tuesday, base down day, we're going through all our base down stuff. I've already met with, with Coach Dow Loggins, um, great coach, you know, he lets me have a lot of input. So it's awesome, you know, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I mean, every day, it's it's a consistent routine. Friday is probably our biggest prep day. You know, I get the guys in there, um, you know, nice and early hour before we leave, go through our whole walkthrough of our opening plays, um, go to the hotel and then go through our whole call sheet. I mean, 70, 75, 80 plays, I'm breaking down every coverage, first, second down, third, short, medium, long, fringe area, red, coming out situational. I mean, it's, it's in detail. So coming to Saturday, you're fully prepared. What would your teammates say about you when you're not in the room? How I, would they describe you, do you think? I think they would say I'm a, I'm a great teammate. I mean, a guy that, that loves his guys. I mean, just fun to be around, not, not too serious, you know, all the time, serious when needed. Um, you know, cool, calm, and collected. You know, I think that's what they say. Sounds like you don't have time for very much. You're, you're very routine, you're super prepared, yet somehow you have time to help others. And that's a big part of being an NFL quarterback. You're going to these cities, these communities, you're expected to carry yourself like a leader. And you have a Spencer Rattler youth camp. It's May 18th in Columbia. Mm -hmm. uh, it's in South Carolina. I wanted to shout it out, but I heard that you had over 400 kids there last year. Tell me about this. It's an amaz amazing uh, camp put on by FlexWorks. Um, they do such a great job. We had, I believe, four 400, 450 kids That's out there wild. last year. So, I mean, from everywhere. I mean, all of South Carolina, um, special community. Kids kids love their Gamecocks and get out there, do some fun drills, some competitive drills. I think it's ages 6 from 16, so you get to see all different types of skill sets, but really just having fun with the kids out I there. I wonder, does it do something to you to be around kids? Does it make you remember that this is why I love the game, not this business stuff that I'm doing day in, day out? Most definitely. I yeah. mean, that's that's the reason I do it. One of the biggest reasons I do it is to inspire the youth. You know, nothing's better than, you know, after a win or even a loss, a kid coming up to you saying, oh, can I please get a you know autographed picture? You, you could have just lost by 20, but you might be feeling horrible, but this kid is super excited, so. It's, it's a blessing. You, like so many, blessed with parents who are supportive of you, who um, you're talking about being inspired, but they, I'm sure, inspire you as well. Um, uh, when you look back at the kid in these photos that we're, we have here, mm -hmm. what sort of, what, what do you think as, as far as in regards to your parents and then being on this journey with you? It's been a long look journey. Look at this kid. <laughs> yep, yep, it's been a long journey, but, um, you know, my dad, my mom, my little sister um, have done such a great job just pushing me, you know, keeping me in all sports, sacrificing a lot, you know, played multiple sports coming up with my sister. So um, it's been a long journey and we're, we're just getting started. You what know? do you, when you look at this guy, what do you want to tell this guy? What this guy? kid, this me? kid, this little boy. Shoot. Be proud of yourself, you know, you've done a lot, accomplished a lot and uh, there's a lot, a lot for you in the future. So what advice keep, would keep you going. give him? 